So the Lions have turned it around for the time being. Hopefully it continues. Uh, who is getting too much credit for the turnaround? And who isn't getting enough credit? All right, so let's start with who's not getting enough credit mm-hmm. for the turnaround. And I think there's there's a couple of guys that you look at, and, and I, I think a guy that has made – Kirby Joseph has come in and played extremely well and has improved throughout the course of the year. The guy that in the secondary I don't think gets enough credit is Deshaun Elliott. And, and you know, when, when you think about him forcing – the fumble a couple of weeks ago Mm -hmm. um, that really set the tone for the game. And you think about what he's been able to do in the secondary. Now, is he perfect? No. But the secondary has played much better. Uh, The defense has played much better in the last five to six weeks. And it's a huge reason why the Lions are right now on a five game, you know, five out of six game win streak. Yeah. Um, I got two people who I don't think getting enough credit. One is Brock Wright. I mean, you look, TJ Hawkinson gets traded, uh, and arguably he's a top 15 tight end in this league. Uh, Brock Wright is more of a blocker, but yep. he shows that he can catch the football, and I think his blocking ability has been outstanding and has helped the offensive line. And speaking of the offensive line, the other person I want to mention who I don't think is getting enough credit is Hank Fraley. Now, when you have the talent that they have there, sometimes the coaching, as you know better than anybody, gets overlooked. And he's done a really, really good job because, you know, early on it wasn't as good as we thought it was going to be, and it's really especially pass protection. Now, they haven't run the football as well lately as they had earlier in the season, but their pass protection has been outstanding. Well, and when you think about, okay, jo- Jonah Jackson at the beginning of the year missed some time. Uh, Hal Vitae hasn't been there all season long. And then all of a sudden, okay, well, you're getting, you know, Evan Brown ready to go at guard instead of center where he played last year. Then you got Logan Stenberg, you got Dan Skipper, you've got uh, Awusika, a, 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 a <laughs> uh, you know, and, and <laughs> it's when you have guys that you're promoting from the practice squad or taking off of other individuals' and, rosters, and, Evan, and then and Evan Brown gets hurt, right? And, and, and so that's what I say. You're you're three to four deep at right. a position. Yeah. And you're still effective? I, I, I think, yeah, Hank is probably in that category of, you know, a, he's doing a, not getting enough credit, but that's that's what O-line coaches kind of thrive on. Like, it's the only time that they're getting talked about is when things go bad. Mm-hmm. And so if you could fly under the radar, you're doing a great job. How about uh, Kaminsky? Yeah, he's doing. he played very well. I love it when that guy's in the game. He's a lot he of. He's just it, a football man. player. Yeah. You know, he is and, and, a football and, player, right, Greg? <laughs> <laughs> he, but, but he's an old school football player, right? You see a guy making a play with a big old bundle on his hand, yeah. like no fingers mm-hmm. keeping him out of the game. Mm-hmm. Let's uh, go. I think collectively the coaching staff for getting these guys coached up, they're doing a lot with a lot of young players, and I think it shows that they fundamentally know what they're doing. I, I'd agree with that, and I, I'd, I'd also agree if we're going to start naming names on the coaching staff, you know, obviously Dan Campbell is talked about a lot for good reason. Mm-hmm. And Ben Johnson is also talked about a lot, and for good reason. The relationship that he has with Jared Goff and running the offense and the flow of the offense, being creative at the right moment. I think the other guy that's not getting enough credit for the, the production and the play of Jared Goff Mark Brunell. Yeah, probably. I mean, you've you, you got to look at if, if a quarterback is playing well, mm-hmm. playing good, you've got to look at the quarterback coach. Yeah. And, 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 I, and I look at him and say, you know what? Jared Goff is playing as good a football, if not better, than he's ever played in his career. Now, nationally, because I think locally he's getting enough credit. Maybe not quite enough, but I think nationally it's Brad Holmes. Oh, yeah. And I don't think it's close. You, you rarely hear his name. Correct. Mention on any of these things and the, what he has done with two drafts, especially this year's um, and he, well, last year's. I mean, getting he went two potential Pro Bowl level players. Yeah, I don't know if, what else you can ask for. I know there's a couple misses in there, but this year it, it's ridiculous. The production you're getting out of what six players? Six out of seven? Absolutely, and it's, it's a crazy. seventh and it's a seventh round pick that 
isn't. Right. It's the it's the right. last the last and, one taken. Right. And he's in the practice it, he's squad. He's on the practice squad. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they're not giving up on him yet either. But yeah, when you have and here's the the pitfall that you know Brad Holmes may fall into is he has set that bar really high for draft picks and and his quality of drafts. You cannot expect a general manager to hit on six of seven every single year. Go through teams' drafts, and if you you'd be hard pressed to find two starters even out of every draft. Like three years later, mm-hmm. you really would. I mean, I, I guess that's the line. I don't know if you'd be hard pressed. That's sort of like the good teams got two starters, and the bad teams yeah. don't. It's like that first Valentine's Day or that first uh, you know anniversary. You want to make sure you set that bar low enough. <laughs> you want to do good enough, yeah. but you want to set it low enough okay. so that you can jump over that bar for the rest of your life. You know, you know who's not getting enough credit? A, a, a guy that people don't even know he exists, probably. Brian Duker. You know who Brian Duker is? No. He was the safeties coach who took over the secondary when Aubrey Pleasant got fired. And that secondary's played not great. Much better, yeah. But a hell of a lot better. That, well, that's why I brought up, uh, you know. The entire coaching staff. Yeah, Deshaun Elliott. Yeah. Uh, you know, and, and, and Deshaun Elliott, it, to amplify your point, he was benched earlier in the season. Yeah. And, you know, I, I just think that you're looking at a lot of different things finally coming together and players or coaches that are not getting enough credit. And I think it's on the flip side of that is those that are getting too much credit. And I don't know if <laughs> it's hard to find it's, it's hard to find that because, you know, at the beginning of the year, we wanted to throw everybody under the bus. Right. At one and six. Now all of a sudden they flipped the script. And I think most fans, as they were, you know, very cautious going into the season, very optimistic, but saying seven wins. Right. Right now, they're still optimistic or you know, very optimistic, but realistic of okay, we're winning five of six. We are hoping that they win four more and get into the playoffs, but we haven't forgotten how we got into this hole at one and six. Yeah, I'm trying to think who, like, players who've gotten too much credit, and I'm only thinking of two off the top of my head. That, and and they're both really good. One is Frank Ragnall because he, he's had some problems with this. He's had a little trouble with the snap. Um, he, he hasn't been as, as great. A lot, now, a lot of that is his toe injury, things like that, right? Yeah. And the other one, you're going to laugh because he does lead the league in a category, and that's Jamal Williams. People just see touchdowns, and he's been good, but maybe he gets too much. I don't know. But he's I'm gotten not, the job done yes, when he was considered to, asked, to yeah. be the yes. starter when he was supposed know, to be the I'm, backup. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm searching. Um, uh, well, you're picking players. Right. My belief is that Ben Johnson, Johnson is getting too much credit. Uh, like I, I'm saying, pump the brakes on him being a head coach for somebody next year. Well, that's pump okay. the brakes okay. on this a little bit. Uh, yes, because I, get I that. think I think he, you know, and it, he's was smart in doing this. Is he was willing to do what Dan Campbell wants to do? To me, this is still Dan Campbell's playbook. Now he's executing it and running it and calling the plays and should deserve credit. Yeah, but well, especially the, when the head coach is. My belief, with the wave. I'm a little bit like, yeah. <laughs> they pump the brakes on this. He's some innovative offensive guy. Okay? Right. Well, you can have a playbook, and you can have certain plays to call, but it's it's the rhythm of calling the it. Sequencing. It's the sequence that you call it with. It's setting up you know, the Penny Sewell catch with the Penny Sewell in motion blocking. Right. right. It, I, that's I, just a, it's an easy example to go off of. I do agree with Gov as far as the head coaching thing. It's he, it's too early in his career to think of him as a head coach. I agree. I wouldn't be surprised to hear his name talked about and let's get say, interviewed. And, and get interviewed, yeah. but to, to to be hired as a head coach, I think it's 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 still too early. You can argue that he's probably even less accomplished to be a head coach next than even Kevin O'Connell was. To be the head coach of the Vikings, because right. at least he did it for a Super Bowl team. Right? I mean, it just reminds me a little bit of Terrell Austin. Okay, it's just like well, and, and okay, he's only well, done it for I one year. Is he still with the Steelers? I don't know. Yeah, but, but here is the other thing about uh, Ben Johnson is that he's only done it for one year. Right, I know. Right. Well, that's what this, I'm saying yeah. about being a head coach next. Right.